What's up YouTube, Adam here. Now yesterday we upgraded the CPU from six cores to 10 cores on my late 2013 Mac Pro. And I'll leave a link to that video in the video description. But today it is time for a memory upgrade. By standard, my Mac Pro came with 16 gigabytes of RAM. And I'm gonna be upgrading this all the way up to 64 gigabytes of RAM with this memory upgrade kit from Crucial. Now on Crucial's website, it does state that you need to remove all of your previous memory. And in fact, the memory that comes in it is four four gigabyte sticks. And there's only four slots inside the Mac Pro. So in order to get 64 gigabytes, you're going to need to get four 16 gigabyte DIMMs. Now you can see that this comes in in the UK at about 300 pounds, including taxes. And if we look at the equivalent price from Apple for this 32, gigabyte kit and like I say 16 gigabytes times two then you can see that it comes in quite a bit more expensive now in order to get the 32 gigabytes on the quad core model you'll need to pay 400 pounds which is obviously 80 pounds more expensive and for 64 gigabytes you'll have to pay 1040 which is almost twice the cost of two of these kits from crucial now, if we look at the six core option, you can see it's slightly cheaper at 960 pounds for the 64 gigs and 320 for the 32 gigs, but still just a little bit cheaper for both of those. And the major downside with the Apple version of 32 gig is that it is four eight gigabyte DIMMs, meaning that there's no improvement possible in the future because there's just no space. So here is the DIM from Crucial itself. You can see the clock speed 1866 there. And now it is time to take apart the Mac Pro yet again. Seems like I'm constantly taking this thing apart just to get the memory upgraded. So the first thing that you need to do is just unlock the little catch on the side of the Mac Pro and then lift off the lid. Hear that extremely nice sound of the metal lid coming off. And then we need to get ready to replace the actual dims themselves. Now I'll fast forward this part of the video, but it is very, very simple. You simply press the latch at the top the little memory unit pops out and then it's just a question of placing in your new memory once you've removed the old one. Make sure that it is definitely nicely seated in there, nice and square, or you will have a problem with it recognizing the RAM and you may have some little niggles later on. But all in all, a very, very simple experience. The only downside to this particular memory upgrade is that it is not black RAM. The previous version of this that came standard with the Mac Pro was all black and it looked quite nice when it was all done up. It's not a big deal, but it was just that nice little touch that Apple have added in to make it all black inside the box. So that is it. The RAM upgrade is all done. Now it's just time to slot back on the lid and plug everything back in again. Now yesterday we did a benchmark which came in at just below 30,000, about 29,500 and that was with the new 10 core processor. So now let's see how the new memory has improved the Geekbench and you can see it's gone up quite a bit now to 30,636. Now I'm running a screen recording software here so you can bump that up by about 500 for a true score and that brings us up to about 31,000 which is only just slightly below that score of the 12 core Mac Pro Direct from Apple. So a very, very good score. Very, very pleased with the overall output of not only the 10 core upgrade but also the 64 gigabytes of RAM upgrade as well. Now, just to show you some of the way that I actually worked out the cost justification for doing it this particular way round. If we take a look at Apple's website and we actually spec up my original unit, you can see that comes in at £4,019. Now, I went for the 6-core model. I opted for 16 gigabytes of RAM, 512 gigabyte SSD and the top of the range D700 graphics cards. Now, if we add onto that the price of the 10 core CPU, that comes in at £1,500. 
and then in addition to that if we add on the 64 gigabytes of ram that came in at about 620 pounds now i know all these prices are in uk prices but the actual ratio between this and other currencies still remains the same so the cost savings should be fairly similar and the overall price 6139 pounds for the options that i went for now, if we actually put in the fully specced 12 core model, but still with the 512 gigabyte SSD like I have, then the price comes in at a huge 7,379 pounds. So you can see the difference there between the options that I went for and the actual main uh, manual upgrades that I went for. There's a fair bit of difference in there between the two. And considering that all the difference is, is actually two cores and a very, very small number inside the Geekbench, I think this is actually a pretty good option to go for. Now, if you add to this the fact that I could sell my six core processor for a minimum of about 500 pounds, this brings the difference up to almost 2000 pounds between the way that I've done it and the way that you could do it by going straight for the 12 core model. The actual figure, 1740 pounds. The difference, just two cores and about 2000 points on Geekbench, so not a huge difference at all. Anyway guys, thank you very much for watching this video. Next up, I have a comparison between the Mac Pro and my Hackintosh, my beast of a Hackintosh. So that should be very, very interested. Make sure that you are subscribed to see that video and I will see you all in the next one. See ya.